Pope Francis lost his temper over a woman converting souls to Christ, and he's still mad. Joining us now, Church Mills Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, what's bugging Francis? Uh, Brad, Francis met with members of the Barnabite order yesterday, uh, priests, nuns, and lay members of this very old order. And there, very oddly, he talked about how he had lost his temper with a woman who came to him and told him how she converted two people to the Catholic faith. Tell us more about uh, how Francis recounted that particular incident. Well, let me quote his exact words, Brad. This is what he told this audience. He said, I had this, a bad experience, in a youth meeting some years ago. I was coming out of the sacristy and there was a lady, very elegant. You could also see that she was very rich with a boy and a girl. And this lady who spoke Spanish says to me, Father, I'm happy because I converted these two. One is from such a place and this one is from another place. Well, Francis then goes on to say, I got angry, you know, and I said, you didn't convert anything. You disrespected these people. You didn't accompany them. You proselytized, and that's not evangelizing. Well, Francis then tells the Barnabite uh, congregation yesterday, he says, she was proud for converting. Be careful to make a clear distinction between apostolic action and proselytizing. We do not proselytize. The Lord never proselytized. This is what Francis says, said yesterday. So first of all, Jules, going back there, now this is recounted yesterday by Pope Francis, but the incident itself probably dated back years, maybe even to when Francis himself was just a priest? Absolutely. It's very clear from his exchange that this took place when Francis was a priest in Buenos Aires. Wow, so he's had a problem with this uh, for many, many, many years. Does Pope Francis ever, ever define what he means by proselytizing versus just helping souls, you know, come to the light of the truth and praying for grace and converting like we all must do and continually do in our lives to Christ's edicts and, and into his Catholic Church? Does he ever define that? Uh, Brad, uh, funnily enough, I wrote a column on this topic uh, two years ago for Church Militant. I think we called it a proselytism, Pope Francis's pet phantom. And there I gave a number of instances about how Francis had railed against proselytizing, talked about evangelizing, but never ever made a distinction between uh, the two. He did so briefly to Jesuits once, but it was very, very vague. So, for example, in 2016, he told a group of Lutherans and Catholics that uh, proselytizing is a sin. He then went on to uh, talk about how proselytizing is uh, the strongest poison against the ecumenical path. Uh, you must give testimony of your Christian life, but without wanting to convince. I mean, we evangelize or proselytize whatever word you want to use to persuade people, which is a term used so often referring to St. Paul's own evangelization in the Acts of the Apostles. He then told his good friend, uh, uh, you know, God rest his soul, who is no more, the Italian journalist, atheist journalist, Eugenio Scalfari, he said, proselytism is a solemn nonsense. It makes no sense. Well, Francis even berated the hapless children in one of Rome's schools. Uh, he told them, you can't tell Jewish and Muslim children, come and be converted. We are not in the times of the Crusades. But Brad, he's never, ever made a distinction between the two. And he's never, ever told Catholics to go out and convert people to the faith of the apostles. 
Well, you know, if you talk about proselytizing as stiff arming someone or using penal laws or like the Islam, you know, conversion by the sword type of thing, I could understand that. But just presenting the truth of the Catholic faith and praying for people and this, that persuades them itself to accept, to could truly convert, not be coerced into the church. I, I, I have a hard time understanding where he's coming from. But let's, let's pull off for a second. Jules, you have a story very near and dear to your heart. Uh, recount for our viewers a related incident of all this uh, that went on between Pope Francis and a former Anglican bishop. Well, we know that this very famous and very erudite bishop, uh, uh, the Bishop of Rochester, uh, a former Anglican, uh, Bishop Michael Nazir Ali, who is a renowned Islamic scholar, he converted to the Catholic faith fairly recently. And uh, Bishop Michael Nazir Ali was on the Anglican Roman Catholic uh, International Committee for, you know, uh, dialogue, archic, and uh, produced many of their documents, uh, co-produced many of their documents. And when he went and met Pope Francis and said he intends to convert to Catholicism, Pope Francis point blank told him, stay Anglican, remain in the Church of England, don't become Catholic. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Bishop Michael Nasrali did not listen to Pope Francis. He did convert, and he is now Monsignor Michael Nasrali. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay. Well, how uh, how is the Italian media connecting the dots on the Pope's latest remarks here? What do they see in all this? Well, uh, the Italian media is having a great time as. Uh, emphasizing how Francis loses his temper. And they're talking about how he lost his temper with a Chinese lady and slapped her hand uh, some time ago. You can see the video there. Uh, she was tugging at his hand quite affectionately, and he slapped uh, her hand. Uh, that became international news. He apologized the next day for doing that, and he said, you know, I, I, I do lose my temper sometimes. But he also lost his uh, temper in Mexico, I think it was in 2016, uh, when uh, he was, uh, uh, you know, bending over somebody's wheelchair and again, more recently, when a woman asked him to bless her dog, he lost his temper and said, you know, people should be having more children, uh, not, uh, not dogs and cats. So Francis is really known for losing his temper. And people who live with him in Casa Santa Marta tell me uh, tell, uh, that he not only loses his temper, but occasionally flies into outbursts where he uses uh, language that would make a sailor blush. Now, I know about that uh, the poor lady, the Chinese lady there that got her hand slapped. She was pleading for the Pope to do something about those who were being persecuted uh, in the, in, for being Catholic in China and uh, other Christians there being persecuted as well. Well, before leaving this planet, Jules, Christ's final marching orders to the apostles, including St. Peter, the first head of the church, was to baptize and teach all nations to observe whatsoever I have commanded. Uh, and, that, and that was at the end of Matthew's gospel. And at the end of Mark's gospel, he adds, uh, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be condemned. You know, it seems like converting well, souls, Jules, to accept the church that Christ himself established is kind of essential to this great commission. Uh, well, Brad, uh, if you go to the Jesuit generalate in Rome, you will see a huge statue of St. Ignatius of Loyola, and below the statue are very beautiful words in Latin. Uh, in the English translation says, go forth and ignite the world. Now, next to that statue is a red fire extinguisher, and when Pope John Paul II visited the Jesuit generalate in 1983, he wryly remarked on the apt juxtaposition. Uh, St. Ignatius saying, go forth and ignite the world. And the Jesuits now having a red fire extinguisher trying to douse the flames of whoever seeks to go forth and ignite the world with the gospel. And remember, Francis is the archetypal Jesuit. 
Brad. Wow. wow, I think you really hit something there, Jules. That's uh, quite the insight from uh, the great John Paul II. Uh, Jules, thank you very much for reporting on all this with such great uh, clear context. Thank you, Brad.